Advances have been made in aerobiology and new fields of research are opening up. Scientists long thought that microorganisms could not have any activity as they drifted through the atmosphere and that they went into pause mode until they fell to the ground. And yet, it would appear that some of them managed to remain active. What can they possibly do in such a harsh environment? We catch up again with Pierre Amato in the clouds on top of the Puy de Dôme. The weather is clearly cloudy today, so it's quite good for collecting cloud samples. It isn't freezing yet, but almost, as you can probably feel. A lovely big cloud like this is ideal for taking lots of samples. We're just finishing setting up the droplet impactor. It's a sort of cloud aspirator with which we can collect the particles, that is, the small cloud droplets suspended in the air. We're going to force them to impact, to crash into a surface. They're going to drip and we'll be able to collect them in a bottle that we'll place under here. Clouds are suspended water systems. Water covers over 70% of the Earth's surface. They could be atmospheric oases for airborne creatures by providing water, or food when the water droplets contain plant debris. The airborne creatures could also fall to the ground with the rain. I'm putting myself in a bacterium's shoes. What is it like to live in an environment like this, to live in a cloud? We have a huge amount of droplets here, and in about one in 10,000, there is a bacterium. We can imagine all these bacteria isolated from one another. Do they interact? If so, how? How do they feel to be all alone? Are they really all alone or grouped together in the same droplet when the desert around us is much bigger than we think? So I want to know how life can sustain itself in there because there is actually life that sustains itself. The proportion of living bacteria in a cloud is huge, about 50%. We know that they spend three to 10 days hanging in the air. That gives them time to do things. Like all living things, bacteria constantly make different proteins to attach to dust particles, to protect themselves from ultraviolet rays, or to produce digestive enzymes. Cloud water analysis enables the researchers to find these molecules and reveal these tiny traces of life. Bacteria do things in clouds. They carry on living. That's to say, they take in nutrients, carbon for instance, nitrogen nutrients, excrete carbon dioxide, and release molecules, such as sugars, in order to better adhere to a surface. So there are all sorts of possible interactions, some of which we've revealed, between the bacterium, or the microorganism, and its environment. A water droplet. In Pierre Amato's Petri dishes, the incredible variety of bacteria and fungi are evidence of the microbial life in the clouds. But life in the air is challenging. Today, scientists who have wondered about this believe that the atmosphere cannot be a habitat in the traditional sense of the term. Planet Earth's small inhabitants simply pass through our ocean of air. A few years ago, an incredible scientific discovery rocked the world of aerobiology a bacterium well known to scientists and found in abundance in nature and in clouds could actually make it rain. The concept of bioprecipitation, rain caused by living things, was invented. 
It revolutionized thinking in aerobiology, meteorology, and agronomics. At the National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and Environment in Montfavet in the south of France, Cindy Morris's work focuses on this bacterium with strange powers. Its name is Pseudomonas syringae. Pseudomonas syringae is known as a bacterium that can live on the surface of plants and cause disease. I have done a little experiment to show you what the bacterium Pseudomonas syringae can do to plants. Cindy Morris sprayed a solution containing the bacterium on the outer leaves of this wild lettuce. But she protected the inner leaves. Then put the plant into a freezer at minus six degrees Celsius for a few minutes. And this is the result. We can see that the tissue where the bacterium was present have frozen, then dried. But the tissue where the bacterium was not present have not frozen. Pseudomonas syringae burns plants by freezing them. It possesses a gene which produces a protein that creates ice crystals. These crystals enable it to pierce the plant cell wall and feed on the flesh. These bacteria are called ice nucleators. It is thought that they are capable of accelerating or boosting in clouds the formation of ice crystals that melt into rain as they fall. It seems to work in a test tube. Everyone knows if you invite friends over for a drink and there's no ice, it's too late. It takes time. To make ice quickly, you need something to kickstart the process. In this tube, I have a suspension of the ice nucleating bacterium Pseudomonas syringae. I'll show you what happens if I add a bit of the bacterium to the distilled water in this sterile tube. As you can see, it's frozen. Can this instant miracle of water into ice occur outside in the wider world? Are ice nucleating bacteria able to take off from plants, ascend into a cloud, and trigger their gene to form raindrops by freezing water? Bioprecipitation is a hot topic. Scientists are learning more and more about how the Earth and the atmosphere are linked by this rain cycle and microorganisms like Pseudomonas syringae. On a we have measurements that suggest it can cause frequent rain cycles, that the rain falling today, thanks to the interaction between the atmosphere, plants and other microorganisms, will have an effect on the rain that comes later. So it isn't about the amount of rain that falls, but the frequency of these events. Rain that falls more often, thanks to plants capable of providing the sky with the right bacteria. Cindy Morris is part of an international community of scientists who want to invent a new form of agriculture, where plant varieties favorable to the growth of ice nucleating bacteria would be grown on particular plots. These special creatures, this aerial plankton, could then be used to combat drought in some agricultural areas a great project for the future.